Hello everybody, welcome back to a book haul. Yes, um, the books I got in December. Now, I got a few. Most of them, most of them were from the charity shop, so they were in 25 pence. But I still have to stop buying because I've got over 340 books on my TBR. It's not good. So, there are three brand new books that I had for Christmas in here, which I will show you as well, obviously. And one I bought brand new. Um, but let's have a look. So, um, yeah, these are all from the charity shop. So the first one I had got was Christmas Carols and Cornish Cream Tea. By, who's this by? Uh, Christina McLaughlin. So, can she spread Christmas cheer in Cornwall this year? Well, I'll have to wait because I won't read this till next Christmas now. All Meredith Varen has wanted, has ever wanted, is to escape the holiday season without having to wear a Christmas jumper. Well, that's easy, just don't wear one. I never wear one. In a new job in a cosy Cornish gift shop, Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year and no one wants a Scrooge selling luxury crackers. Well, yeah, yeah. Then she meets handsome new arrival Finn, who wishes it could be Christmas every day and wants her to feel the same way too. Can she embrace the holly and the ivy before the decorations are packed away for another year? I like Christmas books. Then we've got Millie Johnson, I wish it could be Christmas every day. Six people are looking for a safe harbour. A cosy pub in a snowstorm, a white Christmas to remember. Mary's been trying to get her boss Jack to notice her for four years, but can he only see the efficient PA she is at work? Will be in hold up with him finally give her the chance she's been waiting for? Bridge and Luke were meeting for five minutes to set their divorce in motion, but will be getting trapped with each other, reignite too many fond memories and love. And Charlie and Robin were on their way to a luxury hotel in Scotland for a very special Christmas. But will the inn give them everything they were hoping to find and much more besides? A story of knowing when to hold on and when to let go, of pushing limits and acceptance, of friendship, love, laughter, mince pies and the magic of Christmas. Okay, I've got uh, Harlan Coburn, we got Court. Not a very big one for Harlan Coburn. A 17-year-old girl disappears. Her family hears nothing for three months and now everyone assumes the worst. Reporter Wendy Tynes is on a mission to identify and bring down sexual predators via a televised sting operation. Her latest target is a social worker known to, as a friend to troubled teens. As a community struggles to cope with the loss of the missing girl and the predator who may have taken her, Wendy realises she can't trust her own instincts or the motives of the people around her. Cool. I like a bit of heart and Coburn. Obviously, I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't. Uh, Dean Koontz, The Silent Corner. Now, I used to read Dean Koontz when I was a teenager. The first one I read of his was The Mask. Um, I very much need to be dead. These are the chilling worlds left by a man who had everything to live for but took his own life. Now, his widow, FBI agent Jane Hawke, is determined to learn the truth no matter what. People of talent, seemingly happy and sound mind, have recently become committed suicide in su surprising numbers. Jane will give up everything to find out why. Her enemies are devoted enough to exterminate anyone in their way, but Drain is... Drain? Jane is driven by a righteous rage they can never comprehend because it is born of love. He, um, writes horror normally. So this is interesting to see where that goes. I picked up, um, again, like I said, there's all these 25p in the charity shop, and I'm not going to stop buying them. Not for 25p. If I go in and there's four books I want, I'm getting them. Mm. Uh, Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. I've not read this. This is quite chunky. Looking forward to it. Right, so Lou Clark knows lots of things. She knows how many footsteps there are between the bus stop and home. She knows she likes working in the buttered bun tea shop. And she knows she might not love her boyfriend, Patrick. What Lou doesn't know is she's about to lose her job or that knowing what's coming is what keeps her sane. Will Trainer knows his motorcycle accident took away his desire to live. He knows everything feels very small and rather joyless now and he knows exactly how he's going to put a stop to that. What Will doesn't know is Lou is about to bur burst into his world in a riot of colour and neither of them knows they're going to change the other for all time. Oh, that sounds nice. Okay, now this is one I've got to haul in November and it's Life Eternal. Now my mum gave me this one. This is one that dad picked up for her. Again, it looks like it's not been read. The spine is not broken. And my mum's notorious for breaking spines. So I'm wondering if she actually read it. <laughs> I'm in love with Dante Berlin. He is my soulmate. He saved my life. 
This sound may, may sound perfect, but I know the truth. Dante is an undead. Soon he will turn 21 and death will finally claim him and I will lose him forever. Only one thing can save our love, secret of the nine sisters. Ooh. Yet as I get closer to the secret, I'm haunted by nightmarish visions that hint at a discovery so powerful it may cost me my life, but no sacrifice is too great to keep Dante and me together. Oh, that sounds interesting, doesn't it? Might not have been my mum's sort of thing. She might have read for a bit and put it down. I don't know. I'm thirsty. I've had a cold. Uh, what have we got here? Kathy Rikes, The Bone Code. I love Kathy Rikes, another author that writes really good stuff. A hurricane hits the Carolinas and covering two bodies. Ooh, I haven't read this, have I? No. They are found in a container wrapped in plastic sheeting, bound with an electrical wire, and they bear a disturbing resemblance to a case that has haunted Temperance Brennan for 15 years. Meanwhile, panic erupts when a rare flesh-eating bacterium is discovered that affects people who have a genetic mutation. <laughs> With unrest growing, time is running out for Temp, when her search for the truth reveals that both the murders and the disease outbreak are linked. She realises that someone will do whatever it takes to stop her from getting answers. No crime can stay hidden forever. Oh yeah, that is way up my alley. Oh, definitely. What else have we got? We've got a couple of uh, Lee Childs here. So the first one is Tripwire. I have no idea which order they go in, I don't care. I think there's a couple more of them. You should shoot me now. Um, for Jack Reacher, being invisible has become a habit. He spends his days digging swimming pools by hand and his nights as the bouncer in a local strip club in the Florida Keys. Oh, he's actually settled down somewhere for a minute. He doesn't want to be found. But somebody has sent a private detective to seek him out. Then Reacher finds the guy beaten to death with his fingertips sliced off. It's time to head north and work out who is trying to find him and why. That looks like the guy that plays him in the TV series. Oh no. no. Okay. Then we've got Better Off Dead with Lee and Andrew Child. It says on here, the coolest continuing series character by Stephen King. That's a blurb. Reacher never backs down from a problem and he's about to find a big one on a deserted Arizona road where a Jeep has crashed into the only tree for miles around. Minutes later, Reacher is heading into the nearby border town. Next to him is Michaela Fenton, an army veteran turned FBI agent who was trying to find her twin brother. He might have got up with, uh, mixed up with some dangerous people. In other words, he did. And Reacher might just need to pay them a visit. Just to get in and meet their mysterious leader, Reacher is going to have to achieve the impossible. To get answers will be even harder. There are people in this hostile, empty place who would rather die than reveal their secrets. But then if Reacher is coming after you, you might be better off dead. Oh yes. Currently watching the second series of, of Reach on Amazon Prime. We started it when it was released and we haven't finished it yet. We, I think we're on episode four. Uh, the next one is called The Heat Wave by Kate Riordan. This again is one of the ones I nicked from mum. Well, she read it, so she gives them to me. I don't how to pronounce her name. Alidi was beautiful. Alidi was smart. Alidi was trouble. Alidi was dead. Sylvie hasn't been back to La Riviera, her crumbling family home, in years. Not since the death of her eldest daughter, Alidi. Every or Elodie, Elodie, I don't know. Every corner of that old house feels haunted by memories of her. Memories Sylvie has tried to forget. But as temperatures rise and forest fires rage across the French countryside, a long buried family secret is about to come to light because there's something. Sylvie's been hiding about what really happened to El Elodie that summer. Mmm. Need another drink. It's terrible. All oh, these books. I am not allowed books. I should not be allowed books. This is a big one. This is called Bad Behaviour and it's by Sheila O'Flanagan. Again, this is one I, I might pick this one up myself or I might have had it off my mum. I'm not sure on this one. Darcy has it all. <clears throat> a high-flying career, an apartment in the centre of Dublin. Nice. And a wardrobe bursting with designer labels. Okay, so she doesn't have Mr. Wright in her life at the moment, but she's not short of admirers. So why does an unexpected wedding invitation send shivers down her spine? Because the groom, Aidan, dumped her. For her ex-best friend. Ooh. Neve is now living across the Atlantic, but she's coming home to get married and it's going to be the event of the year and Neve wants all her friends there, especially Darcy. Isn't now the time to put the past behind them? But can Darcy really forgive her oldest friend and allow Neve's wedding to go without a hitch? Or is it possible that Aidan was meant to be hers after all? Mm. You 
see I don't care what I read it could be romance supernatural horror thrillers crime I don't care non-fiction I just don't like a lot of spice in my books I get bored The Perfect Wife by J.P. Delaney I like that married I repeat Ooh. Okay, Abby wakes in a hospital bed with no memory of how she got there. By her side is her husband, Tim, the driven British founder of one of the world's most groundbreaking tech companies. Why are they always groundbreaking tech companies in these books? Yeah. They meet when she's joined his startup as artist in residence. Their marriage, a Silicon Valley fairy tale. But as Abby's memories return, she realises there's something missing from Tim's version of events. Because five years ago, Abby Cullen Scott was pronounced dead. Okay, that sounds... Uh... <clears throat> creepy and interesting. I picked up the curious night of the curious instant of the dog in the night time. I can't even say it by Mark Haddon. I've never read this. I think it's YA or something like that, but I'm, I'm willing to give it a go. Um, I've always been fascinated by the play because there was this big incident when it was showing in London. The, the part of the ceiling collapsed during a performance. Luckily, everybody was okay, I believe, anyway. So, yeah. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime is a murder mystery novel like no other. The detective narrator is Christopher Boone. Christopher is 15 and has Asperger's Syndrome. He knows a very great deal about maths and very little about human beings. <coughs> he loves lists, patterns and the truth. He hates the colours yellow and brown and being touched. He has never gone further than the end of the road on his own, but when he finds a neighbour's dog murdered, ah, oh, he sets out on a terrifying journey which will turn his whole world upside down. Oh, sounds, oh, I don't like it when the animals get hurt. I'm big softy. Yeah, so we got this one. This is Cara Hunter, Murder in the Family. Again, my kind of book. Okay, it was a case that grisped the nation. Lou Ryder's murder has never been solved. In December 2003, Luke Ryder was found dead in the garden of the family home in London, leaving behind a wealthy older widow and three stepchildren. Nobody saw anything. Now secrets will be revealed live on camera. Years later, a group of experts are re-examining the evidence on Infamous, a true crime show, with shocking results. Does the team know more than they've been letting on, or does the truth lie closer to home? Can you solve the case before they do? The truth will blow your mind. Actually, sounds really good. Yeah. Yeah, net. We got Maestra. No idea. This is by L. S. Hinton. Doesn't actually say anything about it on the cover at all. Let me see if there's any. Is it all blurb? There's lots of blurbs. I have no idea what this book is about because there's no information on it. There's just blurbs. Um, Oh, well, there is a little bit. It just looks like a blurb. Oh, yeah, okay, fair enough. A spectacular fraud in a London auction house. Check. Who, a barefoot lover running through the Paris streets, is. A colossal theft from a billionaire's yacht. The. A vicious murder under a bridge in Rome. Maestra. They started it, she'll end it. That's all it tells you. Doesn't that sound fascinating? It actually looked like it was blurbs. <laughs> I'm still half asleep. Then, Just My Luck, Adele Parks. So I've got a couple of Adele Parks. I think this is, well, actually, I think this is the second. Um, but I do pick them up. Again, this was from a charity shop. I don't think it's been read. Look at it. There's no cracking on the spine at all. But this was definitely from the charity shop. Be careful what you wish for. It's the stuff that dreams are made of. A lottery win so big it changes everything. Yes, please. For 15 years, Lexi and Jake have been played the same six numbers with their friends, the Pearsons and the Heathcotes. Over dinner parties, fish and chips, suppers and some sub barbecues, <coughs> they've discussed the important stuff. Kids, marriages, jobs and houses. And they've laughed off their disappointment when they failed to win anything more than a tenner. But then one Saturday night, the unthinkable happens. There's a rift in the group. Someone doesn't tell the truth and soon after, six numbers come up which change everything forever. Lexi and Jake have a ticket worth 18 million and their friends are determined to clear, declare a share, share of it. Woo! And the last of the charity shop books I bought was The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. 
I have no idea. I know this has been big across YouTube, BookTube, BookTok, etc, etc. Um, at a party thrown by her parents, Evelyn Hardcastle will be killed again. She's been murdered hundreds of times and each day Aidan Bishop is too late, too late to save her. The only way to break the cycle is to identify Evelyn's killer. But every time day begins again, Aidan wakes up in the body of a different guest and someone is desperate to stop him ever escaping Blackheath. Now sometimes this is listed as the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Harcastle. I'm not sure why. Um, it's got red end pages. That is so cute. Put that bag down there. So yeah, I'm interested to see what happens in this. And yeah, it was 25 pence in the bookshop, in the charity shop. Now on to the new books. So the first one is the Marilyn Monroe A Photographic Life. This is a reprint of a book that was published a few years ago called The Marilyn Monroe Treasures. Since then other books have been posted with that title so they've changed the title and reissued it. It was never out in, the, in England or the UK in English. I have a copy of it in French and it was available in America. Um, so with her ineffable combination of girlish innocence, glamorous sex appeal and palpable presence on the silver screen. Marilyn Monroe bears an unmatched legacy marked by beauty, style and mystique. Marilyn Monroe, a photographic life, both a compelling biographical narrative and a collector's delight, is a unique and meaningful addition to the Marilyn Library, featuring a number of rare photographs such as a soldier's snapshot of Marilyn entertaining the troops in Korea, as well as many removable pieces of memorabilia including an exquisite watercolour rose that Marilyn painted as a gift for President Kennedy's birthday. She didn't. The Marino Treasures is a lavishly illustrated feast of beautiful imagery and ephemera from the life of one of the world's most beloved stars. Yeah, the, the rose isn't her. If you look at her paintings, the style's completely different, um, but we can get into that in another video if you're interested, let me know. Uh, the books I got for Christmas were The Last Devil to Die by Richard Osman. And again, it's not on the back, I have to look at the inside. Um, Shocking news reaches the Thursday Murder Club. An old friend in the antiques business has been killed and a dangerous package he was protecting has gone missing. As the gang spring into action they encounter art forgers, online forgers and drug dealers, as well as heartache close to home. With the body count rising, the package still missing and trouble firmly on their tail has their luck finally ran out and who will be the last devil to die? I love his books. Then I got Peter James' Stop Them Dead. Now again, I'm going to have to read it from the inside because we've just got pictures of all these other Roy Grace books. <clears throat> In the dead of night, a farmer hears a suspicious noise. It's everyone's worst nightmare, a breaking. When he confronts the intruders, he has no ideas that just minutes later he'll be left lying in a pool of blood. But the chilling truth lies not in the act itself, but what the perpetrators were willing to kill for. At the scene of the crime, Detective Superintendent Roy Grace senses something amiss. This is no mere botched robbery. It's the tip of an iceberg of a nationwide crime epidemic. Ruthless gangs operating with military precision have discovered a new black market flourishing in the shadows, an unthinkable source of wealth even more profitable than drugs. Oh, not like a pig. Grace's investigation into this deadly trade pits him against some of the most ruthless people he's ever encountered. People who will kill anyone who gets in their way because where there is greed, there is murder. The clock is ticking and the stakes have never been higher. Out of his element and out of time, can Roy Grace put a stop to these criminal masterminds before more innocent lives are lost? Ooh. Wow, I love those books. And the last one is Terry Pratchett, A Stroke of the Pen, The Lost Stories. So on the back it just says, far away and long ago when dragons still existed and the only arcade game was ping pong in black and white, a wizard cautiously entered a smoky tavern in the evil ancient foggy city of Moorpork. So this predates the Discworld, we get the genesis of it. And it, oh. So basically the blurb on the inside says, Unearthed gems from the pen of Sir Terry Pratchett, one of the world's best loved storytellers. A truly unmissable collection of 20 rediscovered stories written under a pseudonym in the 1970s and 80s by the award-winning and best-selling author of the phenomenal Discworld series. These early tales hint at the worlds Terry would go on to create, containing all his trademarks, wit, satirical wisdom and fantastic imagination. Meet Og the Inventor, the first caveman to cultivate fire as he discovers the highs and lows of progress. 
haunt the Ministry of Nuisances with the defiant evicted ghost of the Pilgarlic Towers. Visit Blackbury, a small market town with weird weather and an otherworldly, vis an otherworldly visitor. And go on a dangerous quest through time and space with the hero Kron, which begins in the ancient city of Moorpork. A must-have collection for Pratchett fans of all ages. So, those are the books that I got in December. Which ones are you looking forward to the most? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again very, very soon.